Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Demons TV. Uh, lucky enough to have Gary Paul with us today sharing some insight to his uh, newly appointed role as Pathways Development Officer of uh, the Perth Football Club. Thanks very much for joining us Gary. Pleasure to be here Jared, thanks for having me. No problem at all. Now uh, newly appointed in the role, um, it's a very busy role, how are you finding it? Oh it's great, it's exciting. Um, busy time of year to start um, with what's going on with our 14s and 15s but um, really uh, yeah, sinking my teeth into it, and um, just uh, it's great to be working in the football industry. Yeah, for sure. And I guess outside, I mean, obviously Darren Solomon's our football manager at Perth. Um, outside of that role, it's probably one of the most important roles at a Waffle Club, I guess, overseeing the whole development side of things and the whole talent side of things at a, at a footy club. It's a pretty important role. I guess, what, what do you see the main responsibilities of your role? Oh, I'd say, um, obviously, IDing talent, IDing the... Um, you know, the players that we have out in our district and in our country area um, and, and educating them, um, developing them, making them become better footballers um, for the Perth Football Club in the future. Yeah, sure. Uh, for the Robert Wiley Foundation at the moment, what's, uh, what's happening? Uh, at the moment, as I, as I mentioned, we've got our, our 14s and 15s carnivals um, happening. Um, they, they'll be occurring in the type of school holidays. So we have uh, about a week and a half to go. Um, so the guys are all four squads are training hard. Um, now that the district finals are out of the way, they're really um, looking to, you know, get uh, all the game style information into them so that they're playing um, the way the Perth Football Club wants to play. Yeah, that's great. And I guess one of the big focuses of Perth uh, this year has been that one team, one club mentality. Um, and I guess that's trying to like, we're trying to flow that game style all the way from league with Damien McMahon all the way to our under-14s. Has that been a, a focus of the training with the development squads? Yeah, it has. Um, it's, you know, obviously, with Damien's vision, as you know, um, he wants all, all of our squads to play in the same way. Um, so I guess um, from this year, it starts with our 14s, 15s and 16s. If we can uh, get them playing to Damien's um, style, um, his instructions, um, it will only help them as they uh, become Colts and senior footballers um, at the Perth Footy Club. So, uh, you know, we've had education sessions with our coaches, um, brought them up to speed on what Damien's vision is, um, what his uh, what his game style is, and um, we've, we've tried to educate them as best we can. So the, the um, development squad players are putting that into practice yeah. when their games come around. It's tremendous. I it's a great idea, and it's the way it should have been a long time ago. Mm. Um, just with touching on the Colts program, so going away from the development squads, so obviously. Uh, 2011, as we all know, probably wasn't the most successful year our Colts programs had. Um, but I guess how do you judge success? Do you just judge it on a win-loss ratio for the season, or you know, are we? Were the, there were obviously worse some positives to come out of the year? I guess. Yeah, yeah, there was. I guess the the main positive out of the season was obviously Kerwin Stewart's win in the Jack Park Medal. Yeah, um, sure. You know, with the Colts only winning five games, uh, for Kerwin to poll uh, 45 votes, win by 12. Um, was outstanding individual effort for him. Uh, yes, as a group, um, it wasn't overly successful um, with the five wins, but um, I think we saw at, towards the end of the season when we started to introduce some of our under-16s players mm -hmm. that the talent is still there uh, within the club and, and these guys are going to be exciting Colts players for us um, hopefully next year. So uh, to get them involved, um, give them a taste of, of what to expect from Colts footy, um, it was really great and it coincided with us uh, winning our last two games. Mm. And just touching back to the, the Jack Park medalist in, in Kerwin, um, 45 votes, it's obviously a 5 4 3 2 1 system, same as the Sandover medal. Uh, I think Luke Blackwell polled 43 votes or something like that, So, yeah. and they've only lost three or four games of the year. Mm. So for Kerwin to actually poll that amount of votes, it's pretty it's a sensational effort. So. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, just looking at Kerwin's uh, pathway, you know, he's, he's a kid from our country zone, from 2J, he's come through our development squad system, so I guess um, for, for any kid out there in our district, there's a prime example of, uh, of what you can do if you apply yourself and, and really um, sink your teeth into our development program. Yeah, yeah tremendous young kid too. Uh, just moving on to the pre-season for the Colts, so uh, this year at league level, the Colts trained with the uh, league squad on a Monday night. Again, to that was Damien's vision to enhance that one team, one club mentality. Um, do you see something similar happening over the Colts preseason? Uh, I think um, I think what's happened in the past is that um, a percentage of our uh, older Colts players have, have come in and done senior pre-seasons. And, and again, 
using Kerwin as an example, he did that this yeah, year and um, has obviously got the reward from, from being involved with the seniors. Um, I think, you know, in talking to the Colts players, they all love training with the seniors on Monday night. Um, so, uh, you know, hopefully it's something that will continue to happen because I think it just uh, brings our entire playing group together. Um, and so there's not that gap there between the seniors and the Colts and senior players get to know the Colts and vice versa. I think yeah. it's really important. Spot on. Yeah, great. All right, well, uh, thanks for uh, taking time out to join us on Demons TV, Gary. No worries, um, To all the Perth supporters, obviously the carnival for the 14th and 15s is in October, uh, school holidays week one. Yeah, so we have uh, home games on uh, Monday the 3rd of October, Thursday the 6th of October, and Sunday the 9th of October. So obviously all our members and supporters are more than welcome to come down and, and watch the next, uh, next wave of... Perth football has come through the system. Yeah, fantastic. And that's, that's two uh, under-14 teams and two under-15 teams. So just say, for instance, that Monday the 3rd, you could actually watch four games of footy, um, you know, potentially 140 mm. Perth players running around. And, yeah, like you said, the new the new influx of uh, Perth stars running around on uh, Brown Stadium. Yeah. That'd be great. Cool. Thanks again, Gary. No worries. Thanks, Thanks Gary. for watching. Cheers. From the playing fields of rival top to our home in Lathlane Park. On the West Australian football field, we have carved a magic mark. We are called the mighty demons, and we're feared by one.